Hello, this is Taco Magic, and this is my Pump Stack Aquifer Pierce method tutorial. Um, this is a, a method for piercing an aquifer that was first posted on the Bay 12 forums by King Ubu in a Twitch video. Unfortunately, that video has since been removed from Twitch, either by King Ubu or by the moderators of Twitch for whatever reason. Um, however, since this method is really nice and simple and uh, very quick, I decided to make my own video to replace that one that's been lost. I also did the um, tutorial that is on the wiki. This will be drawing heavily from that tutorial. Um, at this point, basically, I'm using the a similar embark to what is on the tutorial on the wiki. The only difference being that is I brought one extra miner just to make things go a little more quickly in the dig phase. Um, otherwise, it's going to be pretty much um, that tutorial, just you know, with the video and commentary. Um, to get started, um, bef actually before you get started, um, it's a good idea to be familiar with uh, both the two-slit aquifer pierce method, which there's also a really good tutorial on the wiki for that one, as well as uh, being familiar with pump stacks. This particular pierce method uses uh, information from both of those methods so it's good to be familiar with them you can do do it without being familiar with those but it's a really good idea um, to be familiar with them um, the benefits of doing this this type this method the uh, pump stack method is that it's quite a bit faster um, than the two slit method it also is less fiddly you you don't have to do as much pump removing pump replacing uh, there's a lot f there's a lot fewer build cancellations than in the two slit method in fact King Ubu first posted this as his no cancel method which is not entirely true there are some cancellations but it's pretty close given how few there are um, the downside of this method is it's a lot more resource intensive uh, you're going to be building lots of pumps and need a pump stack but it's going to be a double pump stack so even more than a normal uh, pump stack. It also requires quite a bit of power um, for every about, about every four aquifer levels you're going to need uh, one fully operational water pump uh, or sorry water wheel in order to run the pump stack. Um, it's also almost impossible to do this with uh, just dwarven labor, labor. Um, whereas with the two slit method you only need one person manning the pump and this one, you could probably do two, maybe even three levels of aquifer with dwarven labor, but it would start to get uh, problematic as they start switching jobs, and it would just get too much. You'd, you'd need to power it beyond a certain level. Um, there's also each hole built by the uh, by this method is a little bit bigger than that of the uh, two-slit method, so again, there's even more materials there. So it is a lot more resource-intensive. You need... Uh, you need a lot of wood, um, and optionally you need some stone. There's a way to do this without stone, but having the stone makes it a little bit more straightforward, and it requires less power from the uh, water wheels. So anyway, let's, let's get started. Much like the tutorial on the wiki, the first thing we need to do is chop down a bunch of trees so that we have enough wood to build our, our pumps and our workshops. Um, and then let's go kind of close to the side here so that we can... And then we're going to build a... Um, a four by three downward staircase to start hunting for our aquifer. Like I said I'm kind of moving close to the side of the map so that when I go to the drain phase, I have a lot. Uh, I don't have as far to go. All right, so we'll just let everybody go. As I said, I brought three miners in the tutorial. I only brought in the tutorial on the wiki. I only uh, say to use two. Um, three just makes it a little, little bit faster. Um, just about everybody in my embark, actually I think it is everybody has carpentry skill, which will make certain portions of this go a lot faster. Um, again, we're doing this one layer at a time because we want to find the aquifer, but we don't want to start digging in it yet. Uh, okay, another one. Aquifer's probably going to be under this layer. Yep, there it is. Alright, um, then we're going to mine out a 10 by 6 rectangle starting from the upper right hand corner and extending to the southwest so like that um, the big important thing is it does need to be six uh, tall because you're going to be placing a drain right here and your dwarves are going to need access to all sides of that drain um, you don't necessarily need all this extra stuff around the uh, around the staircase I just like having it because uh, I like things to be 
uh, symmetric. All right, so let's just build those workshops now that we got some wood. Uh, I'm going to build three carpentry workshops. This will make building all the pieces faster because we have to build lots of pieces for our screw pumps. And then also one mechanic shop because we're going to need three mechanisms. So you can do this without mechanisms, but it does require, uh, I think, 15 more power is what I worked it out to. Um, but like I said, you, that's optional. You can check out on the wiki. There's a no wood um, aquifer pierce or no wood start for this same method. Okay, so now we've got our, our top all ready to go. Um, this is the next part is where we queue up our um, aquifer detection designation. This is something that King Ubu pointed out that I actually didn't know and is really handy. Um, basically, if you dig an up downstairs into an aquifer above a designation for uh, more up downstairs, if you hit damp stone below where you're digging, um, you'll get a damp stone cancellation. So basically the way, basically this acts as an, as an aquifer detection. Um, basically what will happen is that they'll dig down into this first layer of aquifer and then if we get a damp stone cancellation it means the layer below it is also aquifer. Um, this is a lot nicer than doing the, in the doing the uh, step at a time that's on the two slit uh, two slit method. In fact this would also work for the two slit method. It's just that at the time I don't think anybody knew about this. Uh, I certainly didn't. Okay so we're gonna see, oh there we go. Uh, digging designation cancelled, damp stone located. That means that this layer where the cancellation just happened is aquifer. Indeed, you can see that it's flashing. If it hadn't cancelled, it would mean that um, it would mean that there was no aquifer here. Uh, because it only cancels on the very first tick after the digging happens. So if the stone becomes damp after that first tick, which is what happens with stone, you don't get the cancellation. If it's initially wet on that first tick, or damp on that first tick, you get the cancellation. So it's like it's a very handy little trick, uh, one that I didn't know before seeing King Ubu's video. So um, if you've never seen that before, it's really, really handy for digging out aquifers, um, no matter what method you're using. Okay, so all of our workstation, our craft stations are done. Uh, okay, so now we're going to make our, I'm going to make 10 sets for screw pumps, so 10 wooden blocks queued up, and then 10 enormous wooden corkscrews, whoops, and then 10 wooden pipe sections. And then I'm also going to make those three uh, rock mechanisms, All right, and let them get working on that. Meanwhile, back at our top here, we are going to make some channels here. Uh, basically, we want to channel out the far east, or sorry, far west three stair up down staircases going into our aquifer. And then we're going to do a column of four starting e up equal with the top or the most northern portion of the stairs and going one below. And then three just west of that in a column. This one we will dig out uh, later in order to start our uh, dwarven water reactor. That's the other downside of the of this method is that it does use, uh, at least in its most simplest form, it uses the exploit of, uh, of the dwar dwar dwarven water reactor. Um, again, it's just this is the easy, easiest way to produce um, the power needed to run the pump stack. You could actually do this method uh, with you know windmills or a river, um, this is just keeps it close by. I recommend for your first time doing this that you go ahead and just bite the bullet and do the dwarf and water reactor, and then in the future you can worry about whether or not that's too explodey for you, um, and then use windmills or whatever you want to do. Okay, so we're going to do our two, build our two screw pumps here. They're going to be placed pumping from the east, so it's pumping out of the staircase and into our drain. Uh, going to place two of them, one at the very northern end. It looks like we don't have enough parts yet for the second one, so we'll just have to wait. Um, but we're going to place two here. Hopefully they'll be up there working away getting the next one ready. Or the next set of parts ready, I should say. Let's see if they have... Yep, okay. So again, two of them, both pumping from the east out of the staircase and into what's going to become our drain. And then we're going to also build... Build one gear assembly just south of the bottom one 
um, by the drain. So right there, and that's going to be where we're going to hang our first uh, first water wheel for our, our water reactor. And it's probably taking so long because I made two of the uh, two of the carpenters architects, so they might be. Oh, there we go. So they'll start building those for us. Um, there's also a small danger that somebody's going to slip down one of those uh, one of those channel out spaces, so you could always throw some grates over it to make it a little more safe. Um, I, <laughs> in one of my f drafts of of doing this video, um, I I've done this method a couple of dozen times. Uh, I've never had any problem. In my first try at this video, I had a dwarf fall down the stairs and die. Um, and kick off a tantrum spiral. So yeah, <laughs> it is possible. It's uh, just apparently very rare. Uh, maybe one in 36. Okay, so now that's all built. Um, now we're gonna build build another gear assembly, hanging off the northern pump into the stairwell area. This is gonna be what we hang the rest of the the pump stack from. And then we're also we're also gonna build our water wheel right off that southern gear assembly. Let them come in. Finish all this up. Meanwhile, let's see how these are doing, because I want to queue up also a bunch of wooden blocks so that we can quickly build walls when we when we get that far. I think this one's probably ready. We'll just a bunch of blocks there too. Alright. just on that last gear. Okay, so now we're basically ready to start. Um, if you suspect that there's going to be a deep aquifer, you could go ahead and build a uh, second water wheel connected to that first one. Um, I'll do that. I know that I'm gonna. it's going to come to that, but I'm going to do that later. Uh, anyway, so now that we've got everything in place, we can channel out this square here. This will start the Dwarven water reactor. Um, you could technically do this by just kicking on one of those two pumps manually, but uh, for whatever reason, I like doing it this way. Okay, so now you can see we're draining out here. You've got two tiles that are flashing dry in the northwest corner of our staircase. Now what we're going to do is drill a pilot hole. This will basically tell us whether or not the layer under the layer below um, our current layer is aquifer. So uh, basically we've got our top layer, our first layer of interest, our, our current processing layer. We've got the layer under that, which is the one we're about to dig our pilot hole in, which will be under this upper left-hand corner, and this is the layer under it. Basically, we're looking for a damp stone cancellation in this layer. If we see one, that means this layer is also aquifer. Um, so we'll just go ahead, up down staircase right there. So you may get a cancellation of this job depending on pathing. Yeah, see, we're getting a couple of them. They will eventually get to it. Okay, so here we go. Um, you didn't see it there, but anyway, di digging designation canceled, damp stone located. So again, this is um, aquifer layer. Uh, so we're just going to remove the designation from that. Let's see what this is. This looks like uh, sandstone. Okay, so sandstone is indeed one of the aquifer layers. So we definitely have another aquifer layer under this. What is this? Fire clay, damp sand. Okay. So now that we know that we've got aquifer deeper down, we can continue. So what we're going to do is column by column mine this layer out directly underneath our current processing layer. Uh, basically this is to create an aquifer drain. This is pretty much exactly like what you do in a multi-level two-slit method. You're basically just creating a, an aquifer drain. We do it one column at a time because this cuts down a lot on those um, dangerous terrain cancellations. Um, if you do the whole whole 4x3 at once, you'll get a lot of cancellations and end up having to redesignate a bunch of areas to be dug. So this is just, uh, this is just a little bit less, I don't know, irritating to do. Alright, so now we've got our full drain. As you can see, we no longer have any water pooling here because it's all draining down into that aquifer layer. Again, exactly like the two-slit two method when doing multiple levels of aquifer. Uh, now that we've got that all done, it's time to dig it out and wall it off. Um, Basically, when digging out an aquifer um, in this method, we're going to do every other tile all the way around, ignoring diagonals. So you skip one, skip one, skip one, again, ignoring diagonals. Miners will come down and dig that out right quick. I 
Yeah, that'll clear up. Okay, now we're gonna build some walls using those blocks. Using those blocks that we just created. Uh, where are the blocks? There's so one. And with seven carpenters, this should happen really quickly. Again, we won't see any cancellations here. I've, you only see a cancellation once in a once in a, a blue moon doing this um, doing this method, which is really nice because it is having done the two slip method for quite a while, um, it gets old on suspending all those walls. Uh, I know there are ways to do two slits with fewer suspensions, but not this few. Okay, more walls. So that's all dug out again. Basically we did every other going around and then we did the rest of them. And then again, just walling off the aquifer. Hopefully we got some more blocks and yep, willow, okay. All right, now come and do these walls. One left. Okay, and there you have it. We've got our first level of aquifer uh, walled off. That's pretty painless. Um, so, now that we've got it walled off, we're ready to start this is going to be the first level of our pump stack. Um, and this is technically the first level of our pump stack, but it's not its not part of a stack in the way that you normally imagine a pump stack and that it's not sitting directly on top. So we can kind of call this like the top of our pump stack. Um, and to start this, basically we're going to channel out these four tiles here. Um, these tiles on the right will be our reservoir or the place where the pumps are pulling from, these will be for transmitting power down the stack. Um, and while they're doing that, we also want to build a gear assembly hanging from the one above. So you've got this gear that's kind of hanging off in space off of this pump. And this one's going to be hanging from that gear. Um, this is going to be where we attach the top of our pump stack. From here on out, um, lower levels will just be hanging off the pumps. And they yeah, that was great. They dropped the gear right into the water, so we're going to have to make another one. <laughs> uh, that was great. <laughs> oh, and we had a dwarf drown, too. That's great. <laughs> uh, hopefully that won't be a problem. <laughs> uh, you guys done with it yet? No, yet. Oh, and he was... He, no, I should, I should have two mechanics. Nope. All right, let's pull up uh, dwarf therapist here real quick. Was it one of? Them? Was it? Did I only have one mechanic, and was he the one that died? <laughs> yep. All right. Well, let's give everybody a mechanic. Oh, uh, that's great. Okay. So. <laughs> Somebody do that yet? There we go. Seriously, I've done this like 30 or 40 times, and I've never had dwarves die, and as soon as I try to make a tutorial, they're just dropping like flies. Uh, I guess I'll have to make sure to do the gear assembly after I do the channeling from here on out. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you did find them dead. Alright, so now that we got the gear assembly, we're ready to hang the screw pumps from it. Um, in this case, we're pumping from the east because we want to pump out of that channel at the far right there. So I'm not gonna not gonna cut off here. I, I thought about maybe starting over, but I think you can all appreciate having a dwarf kill themselves trying to go after a uh, <laughs> trying to go after a, a mechanism. All right, so those are hooked up and they start pumping right away. Um, let me just uh, create a uh, corpse pile here real quick. Uh. Alright, let's get him out of the out of the hole there. 
Okay, so now we're pumping again. Um, again, same thing that we basically just did for this level. First thing we want to do is a pilot hole. Uh, again, in that, in the upper corner of the one being pumped. In this case, since we're getting that upper one pumped, we went right under it. Uh, and we're looking for that damp stone cancellation, which we just got. We had some stuff going at the bottom, but we get digging designation canceled, damp stone located. So we know that this level is aquifer. So then we can remove the designation from that level. And then once again, one at a time, or one column at a time, dig out the rest of this rest of this level to make our drain. Hopefully they will move our friend the mechanic while we're doing this too. And get that last row carved out. Or row clock column call carved out. Okay, so now we're done with this uh, this this drain. So as you can see, we've got our top. The layer right below that, which is aquifer layer one, got aquifer layer two, which is the one that we just started draining, which we'll be digging out shortly. This is aquifer layer three, which is acting as our drain, and this is aqua layer, aquifer layer four, which we haven't started doing anything with yet. And under that, we have these designations that we will be using to sense our aquifer layers. So once again, going around, we're going to do every other square, again, ignoring the diagonals. And ignoring all the pile of stuff that's sitting right there. Okay, now we're going to build walls using our collection of blocks. I have to build some more once we've got these walls started. Yeah, but that's, I think, my last block, so I won't be able to build the pumps. Alright, so while they're walling that off, let me a whole bunch more blocks. I suppose I could just build a table and chair and assign a manager, but why do it the easy way? All right, they got that walled off again. Now we're going to do the remaining ones. So basically we're just doing Walling in two steps. You take every other block, and then you take the rest of them. Again, don't, not not counting the diagonals, because aquifers don't drain on the diagonal. Okay. Uh, I'm out of blocks, so let's just use logs. Logs take a little bit longer, but they're not bad. Luckily, starting the next level, we've got sandstone, so instead of digging out and walling, we'll be able to just smooth. Um, I enabled uh, engraving on everybody so that when it comes to smoothing, uh, everybody who's otherwise idle can come down and help out. Okay, so now I've got another layer of aquifer walled off. That's our second layer walled off. So now we're ready to do our channeling again. In this case, we need to uh, mirror uh, horizontally what we did here. Uh, because we're doing a pump stack, we need to pump from the other direction. So, I'm going to channel out those two and these two. Again, those are o opposite of what we did on the layer above. This creates our pump stack. And there they are. Okay, so again, now we're going to build screw pumps. Two screw pumps pumping from the west. Uh, last time we pumped from the east, now we're pumping from the west out of that channel on the far wall. Some blocks get made up there. Oops. Uh, this will continue on our, our pump stack, another two. And building it from the top down like this, we're actually taking advantage of a nice little quirk of the pump stack in that when you build them from the top down, they actually magically transport water up all the way to the top of the pump stack every turn. Um, Basically, it does this because 
pump stacks fire in reverse order that they were built. So by building them from the top down, the bottom ones fire first and the ones above them fire. Well, when those ones fire, there's already a bunch of water in, in that space that they're drawing from. So then it just moves up to the next one, the next two up fire, and they do all do that from one one tick to the next. So, um, I mean, you would be hard pressed to do, build this from the bottom up, but it's just a nice little quirk that um, we don't actually have to put a wall anywhere to contain any liquid because we're taking advantage of that. Hmm. Look where my architect is. Probably making wood blocks. or on break. There he is. There we go. Okay. So, next level, same exact thing. We're going to start with our pilot hole. Um, again, in the top corner of the two that are that are being currently emptied. Couple of dangerous drain cancellations. There we go. Okay, so we got once again damp stone cancellation. Um, that means this level is aquifer as well, so we can cancel that designation um, and then mine out our up downstairs designation, mine out uh, this level of aquifer. Again, one column at a time to avoid lots of dangerous terrain cancellations. This will create our next level of drain. From here on out, it's all pretty much the same as I did for the last last level. It's create your drain, wall it off, dig your channels, build your pumps, dig your pilot hole, create your drain, rinse, lather, repeat until you're th until you're down to the last level of aquifer. Once we get there, then we have to do the hatch trick, which reminds me I have not queued up a hatch yet. While they're doing that, I will do just that. And everybody's upset that there's a dude dead and rotting. Okay, so, wooden hatch, uh, let's also queue up a coffin, see if we can keep everybody happy here. Uh, casket, okay. So. so, once again, now we have a level that's draining out into that layer. This is the layer below this one. So now that we've got it draining, we can go ahead, ooh, this is sandstone, so we can actually smooth rather than wall off, so. Smooth is really nice in that you don't have to bother with digging. You just queue the whole area for smoothing. Your engravers take care of it. Uh, smooth wall doesn't... Uh, smooth wall overrides the aquifer in the stone, so you don't have to worry about it. So once this is all smooth, it's walled off. Okay, now that level is dry. So, now we got to do our channeling. Again, exact uh, horizontally opposite of what we did last last level. If you ever want to know which level, where you need to dig your next hole, you just look and see where your channel is on the, the floor above, and then you dig your your channels on the other side. Um, we're going to get two more screw pumps pumping from the east, continuing our pump stack. Looks like we're going to run out of components here if this is too much deeper. Um, and I bet you this is going to run us out of power. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to run out of power when we build that one, so we're going to add another water wheel. This will double our power. Only for the deepest aquifers will you need to go past two water wheels, but it does happen. I had a nasty 10 layer water for. Sorry, aquifer. Uh, a couple weeks ago that required three water wheels to get through. And when you see a little bit of water splashing out, don't worry. It won't actually flood, it's just splash from the... And you see the whole stack just ground to a halt because we ran out of power. So we gotta wait for this other water wheel to be built. There we go. Alright, so, once again, this is our last level that we've completely finished. This is our draining level, so once again, upper upper corner, that's being drained. Up down designate up down stairway designation. 
and we're waiting to see a damn stone cancellation. There it is. Wow. Okay, so that's a deep one. So we are going to remove the designation and then continue column by column, digging our digging our drain for the layer above. Yeah, it's really nice when you have It's really nice when you've got a lots of stone layers because then walling them off is just as easy as smoothing. Like I said, I enabled smoothing on everybody to speed things along. Okay, so we are now completely draining this layer, so we're just going to smooth the wall with sandstone. And basically, as I said, we're just going to keep doing the same thing till we find the bottom of this aquifer. Alright, so, dig our channels. And I think this is going to be the last of our screw pump parts, so hopefully there's not another aquifer under this layer, otherwise we'll have to build some more. Alrighty. Okay, so once more, pumping out of here, create a drain, or sorry, not a drain, pilot hole into our drain layer, looking for a damn stone cancellation or lack thereof. Oh, that time we did not get a damn stone cancellation, so that means this layer is not aquifer. Alternately, it can happen that you'll just happen to punch into like a an ore vein or something. So you do have to make sure that when you don't get that damp stand cancellation, um, that you double check it. In this case, I'm actually going, I'm going down. I'm canceling all of the de rest of the designations now that we've hit a layer that is not aquifer. Uh, we don't need those uh, designations anymore. In fact, if we leave them there, they can cause problems. All right, so check the stone. It's granite. Granted, it is indeed a non-aquifer layer stone, so we know that this is most likely both the bottom of our aquifer, or sorry, that this level is the bottom of our aquifer and that this is not going to be aquifer, and we're probably not going to see aquifer underneath. Now you can get like cake aquifer where you've got alternate, alternating layers of aquifer and stone, um, but that usually only happens when you have very hilly terrain or mountainous terrain. In this case, I picked the, fl the flattest embark I could, I could find that had a deep aquifer in it, so um, we should not run into that. Okay, so now that we found the, the bottom of our aquifer, the rest of this portion goes exactly like previous, where we dig out one column at a time. Oh, gotta actually unpause it. And let's just actually write in time, too, because we... Oh yeah, we're gonna need to build two more pumps. Alright. Alright. While they're doing that, I need to queue up enough for two more pumps. Pipe section. Okay, so that'll they'll get to building those. Alright, so this is the last layer of our aquifer. Uh, layer above it, exactly the same as we've been doing. Smooth it off, dig our channels for the pump stack. And we just got into summer, so that means we've been going at this now for uh, 10 weeks. And we're actually almost done, so it looks like we'll probably get this all taken care of in eh, maybe 12, 14 weeks. Pretty good for, uh, I think this is a six or a seven level aquifer. I'll 
Count them up in a second. Alright, so we got that wall off. We're going to do our channels. Just double check where they're supposed to be. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six level aquifer. Nice tutorial aquifer. Okay, those have been dug out. Now we can build our screw pumps. Good, they got all the parts done. Okay, so now we're now we're on to the last level of aquifer. This is much different than the other levels in that uh, in the two-slit method, uh, you get this layer cleared of water by um, essentially tactical wall placement in order to create an area big enough to, to utilize evaporation to get rid of the rest of the water. That's not an option here. Instead, we have to use the hatch trick. Uh, the hatch trick is you basically build a hatch, and then you dig down under it. The hatch keeps the water back. So... First thing we need to do is build that hatch. We're going to build it in this upper right-hand corner. That's the, again, the upper of the two spaces that are being pumped. And this is the one where you're going to get the most cancellations. Usually, you got to restart this job a lot because it pushes the workers around and it pushes the hatch cover around. And it's said so this is the only time you really have to deal with it in this entire method, other than a couple of mining cancellations. Almost done. There it goes. Okay. Uh, once you get it built, uh, built the good good thing to do is to make it not pet passable, especially if you've got cats or dogs. You don't want too many th too many creatures going through this hatch because whenever a miner goes through, a little bit of water is going to seep in, um, and you want to keep that to a minimum. The other thing you want to do at this point is if you have any stone stockpiles or any stockpiles with stone enabled, you want to go around and disable those stockpiles or at least disable stone from it. Again, you don't want people going under this hatch cover who aren't directly involved in the mining. Okay, so now that we've got our hatch cover built, the next thing we're going to do is build, sorry, not build, but designate up downstairs going down a couple of levels. Let's take it down four levels. Um, basically, this is, we're going to do a, a side drain you can drain into the caves. Uh, draining into the side is easier and it doesn't uh, hinge on you actually hitting cave. Okay, so I'm just gonna create our up-down stairway here since we got a like went to this wall here. Oh, they they did too much water, so we'll have to take it. This is easy to work around, luckily. Dig some out over here. That will occasionally happen where too many miners will come through and then it'll get your water a little too deep to work with. Not a big deal. It's only a big deal if it gets a lot of water and if you're looking for the caves. Alright, so now we're ready to make our drain off the side. Just I like to do it three by or three tiles wide. I know you can do it with one tile. Um, it seems to me that three tiles wide actually uh, evaporates a little bit faster because of the way water likes to dance around and um, by having bit wider you just got more surface area for those ones near the end to evaporate and for water to dance dance around into the spaces created by those ones evaporating um, so it's a just something that I, I noticed um, may or may not be true but subjectively I like to do this more all right so now that we've got this tunnel dug all the way to the edge of the map not counting these last three uh, we're gonna smooth those and then we're gonna fortify them this is basically your water drain 101. Okay, so it's been smoothed. Now we're going to carve fortifications. Good. Now we have a map edge drain and a dwarf sleeping down here. That's well timed. Okay, so next thing we want to do is from the bottom level up, we want to dig out up down staircase uh, stairways in the shape of our staircase. So uh, this should give our 
sleeper there plenty of time to wake up. Oops, and of course I'm pressing the wrong buttons. No. Okay, so. Okay, next level. Getting up down stairways the entire way up. Now, the real important thing is just to make sure that you don't dig out the layer right below the aquifer until you have the entire shaft ready to accept the water. Otherwise, you're going to get some some flow dancing around and it could cause cancellations. It could knock dwarves into places where you don't want them. Uh, you just want to make sure you do this last. Okay, so now we're right under the aquifer. Um, from here on, we just designate the 4x3 to be dug out and our miners will come take care of it. Hopefully from the bottom up, and this basically creates our uh, our side map drain. All right, now that that's dug out, we can remove this hatch cover. We don't need it anymore. And as you can see, water is draining right off the map. So you can also do this down to the caverns. Um, I just find it's a lot more convenient just to dig the side one out. Okay, so now since this is a stone, we can smooth it. If it were dirt, we would you know dig out and wall, but in this case, we'll just smooth it. A little bit left. And there we go. Let's see, we did it just shy of midsummer, so that's pretty good. Six level aquifer in about 13 weeks by the looks of things. And that's pretty much it. That's the method. At this point you can go back back up, fix your fix your staircase up however you like, remove all the remove all the pumps, take down the, the water reactor, floor over and add stairs to areas that have been channeled out. Um, and then you're good to go. You're all the way through. Um, and that's pretty much my tutorial. I uh, hope you learned something new here. Um, like I said this is my absolute favorite method for piercing a deep aquifer for shallow aquifers. Um, there, be there are better methods. Um, but this is a great one for deep aquifers. I find it to be fast, um, if not exactly material efficient. Um, so thank you for listening. This is Taco Magic, and this has been my aquifer pierce tutorial for the pump stack method.